Hey there everyone, welcome back to the 2022 USBCs. We're following the Spectre team in their semi-final match against the Rosenthal team. And today we'll be looking at the fifth segment, the first segment of the second day of match play. So let's take a look at the hands. All right, well, looking at this scorecard, a lot of push boards here. We can see only nine to nine in terms of imps. So pretty closely contested segment. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there aren't any interesting hands out there. So, you know, board four kind of jumps out at me. It is the first large swing of the segment and one pair looks like kind of had a sacrifice at the two level. Uh, but let's take a look at the open room first. So, on this board, everyone vulnerable, west in first seat, opens a club. Okay, yeah, he has 12 high card points, nothing more to say about that bid. North, despite his 12 high card points, has nothing to do over one club opener and will pass. And east has a natural one spade response. Now, some players might pass with East Hand because they have fewer than, say, six high card points or whatever you might define as your minimum for responding to your partner's opening bid. But I like responding to partner's opening bid almost always because it puts a lot of pressure on the opponents. If it really is their hand, they will have difficulty coming into the auction. If we as East announce that we have fewer than six high card points with a pass, for example, uh, then the opponents will have an easy time understanding that this is probably their hand, they can balance in with a double, they can balance in with a jump shift to show some extra high cards, uh, they could just balance with one level overcall, and we're going to have a hard time not only finding our fit if we have one, because partner could still have 16, 17, and the points could be split, but we're also going to have a hard time determining whether or not this really is our hand or if it's the opponent's hand. So I like the one spade bid. This just means partnership-wise you need to be a little careful uh, as opener that your partner could have a hand as weak as this, for example, when responding to your one of a minor opening bid. But all right, let's take a look at what happened. So South comes in with a double, and this is probably going to be a very hotly contested choice in most situations, for, for experts I would say. When you have a five card major suit, it's really important to be able to bid that five card major. So a lot of the times when you make doubles, like takeout doubles, for example, this is a takeout double of spades, um, you really want to have just a four card major suit. Uh, on the side so that your partner will know whether or not you have a major suit fit. In this case, I understand South's hesitance because with 5-3-3-2 distribution, it's fairly weak distribution-wise for holding a five card suit. The suit only has five cards in length and normally we would want to have a six card suit when we overcall, of course. So South had to choose between three different options at this point in the auction. It would either be to overcall two hearts, which would show a single suited hand in hearts. That's more or less what he holds, but maybe this hand just really isn't up to the standards that you would need for that kind of bid in this auction. South could make the takeout double, which is what he elected to do here. And normally this would just be takeout of spades, so it should promise hearts, diamonds, and some clubs. Although West did open the bidding of clubs, so you take that with a grain of salt. Normally it would show both red suits at least, which is kind of what South has. Uh, obviously he's not 4-4 in the red suits, which he would kind of prefer to be. Some hand that's like two spades, four hearts, four diamonds, and three clubs would be perfect for this type of bid, but you gotta make do with what you have. And the final option is to pass. Now, personally, I might just pass with South's hand here, but I do think that it is a close decision. And this is one of the strengths of this one spade bid from East. 
South was put in a very difficult spot, whereas had East passed originally over the one club opener, South would have had a very easy balance with a two heart bid, a jump shift showing a little bit of extras because you don't want to preempt in the balancing seat, you want jumps to show some extra values. Uh, but okay, so South here elects to double, and West redoubles, showing three card spade support. That's all this does, it doesn't say anything else about West's hand. North decides to pass, and East elects to bid two diamonds. Now this bid strikes me as very strange. As East, I would be very happy to declare one spade redoubled, if that was what was going on in this hand. I don't expect the opponents to pass this out, but just we're at the one level, partner has showed me some support, we have a seven card fit, so by the law of total tricks we're okay playing at the one level, but additionally partner can have extra values, and if partner doesn't, please let us sacrifice and one spade redoubled when the opponents are probably making game. For all we know, we might even make one spade redoubled, which would be a game score our, our way. So I really don't understand the two diamond bid from East. Maybe this was trying to show a secondary suit that he's hoping will be helpful to his partner in terms of competing if the opponents bid up higher in this kind of auction. But with such a weak hand, I don't see any reason to get more involved in this auction. I mean, two diamonds for all we know, South has showed diamonds. If this goes pass, pass, double, all pass, we're very unhappy. And since partner opened a club, we're very unlikely to have a diamond fit on this kind of auction. So I think this is a big mistake by East. Not that it probably changes the end result of this board, but um, it feels like East missed an opportunity to just get out of the auction at a low level without getting any more involved. Okay, so South has already made the takeout double, he has nothing more to say, pass, pass, and now North reopens with the double. And I think this is probably constructive. It probably shows three diamonds and some values and is suggesting penalties against the two diamond contract. Once again, North expects his partner to have diamonds on this kind of auction. So this bid makes sense. And South, even though his partner is suggesting penalties, he only has three diamonds. And more often than not, he's going to have four or even five a lot of the time on this kind of auction when he makes a takeout double spades. So it makes a lot of sense that South pulls to two hearts. And now North, with his 12 high card points, elects to try three no trump. He heard his partner come in to the opponent's auction after a club pass a spade with a takeout double. His partner should have pretty close to an opening hand, if not an opening hand already. He knows his partner has some spades, so his partner should have even more values for the takeout double, since North has a count on the spade suit. He knows East wouldn't pull one spade redoubled with a five card suit, uh, so East must have four. West has exactly three, as promised. He has three, so he can count his partner for three spades in the auction. And so with all of that, he expects his partner to have some values, and therefore three no trump should have some decent play. Now, let's take a look at the prospects for the defense. So as East, I think I absolutely would lead a spade, and given that partner has three spades, I think we should lead the jack. Uh, it's definitely possible that dummy has queen doubleton, for example, or like queen nine doubleton, for example, or declare has the nine, and so leading a low spade away from the jack 10 could potentially give up a trick in that suit. Um, and if spades are four triple three around the table, then leading the jack will at least clarify that holding for our partner in that suit. So let's take a look at what East does. Uh, this is, I think, really going off the rails for East here. I don't understand this opening lead. Our partner opened clubs, not diamonds, so we don't really have a diamond fit. And we don't have any entries to our hand. The King of Diamonds is our only entry, so if we're trying to set up a suit, setting up the fourth round of spades has to be more productive than setting up a long diamond suit that we're never going to be able to get into cash. Sure, 
there might be some unusual scenario where partner has queen ten third of diamonds and declares stoppers ace doubleton, but this double that North made in the auction, I think, should steer us away from that possibility. So I think this is just going in the wrong direction. East really should have been leading spades on this kind of auction to try and set up a suit that his partner actually has support in. Now for Declare, we have off the top, after the diamond lead, we have seven tricks off the top, two diamonds, three hearts, and two spades. So we need two extra tricks somewhere. It looks like the only possibility for those extra tricks is going to be in hearts. And I think I would probably put up the jack of diamonds and plan on playing a heart to the 10 at trick two. We know East doesn't have a four card heart suit because East would have responded one heart to the one club opening bid. So the only player who could have four hearts would be West, and it's possible. There's no guarantee that West has four hearts. But given that West also opened the bidding and the Jack of Hearts is a high card point that we would be counting towards our opening bid in most scenarios, I think the percentage play at this point would be to hook the Ten of Hearts. That's just my personal preference, but in a vacuum, obviously the best way to play the heart suit for two extra tricks is to just bang the Ace, King, Queen and hope the suit splits. So let's take a look at what Declare does. He does hop up with the Jack of Diamonds and he leads a heart, and he puts in the 10. This is beautifully played, I would say, from North here. And the only reason he was able to take this line of play is because East actually led a diamond, giving him a second dummy entry. Because the Ace of Spades would provide one dummy entry, but now we still need to unblock the Queen of Hearts and play a spade back over to the Ace for the stranded heart winners in dummy. So once the hearts split, Declare is able to just simply cash out the rest of the hearts, and take his nine tricks. It looks like he's maybe playing for some potential squeeze, but eventually he's just going to have to cash out because the clubs are a little too scary. So I would say overall well bid and played by North-South. Even though the diamond lead didn't cost because the hearts did turn out to be 3-3, I think that East got off to the wrong opening lead here. But let's take a look at what happened at the other table. So at this table, West opened a club and East bid a spade once again. So both players in the East seat understanding that it just makes it very difficult for the opponents to come into auctions when you both start bidding. So here we see that South passes, and this is the bid that I think I would have made in South's position, but I do feel like all three options are on the table, two hearts and double as well. So South at this table likes to pass, West bids a no trump, showing just a natural hand, balanced minimum. And East bids two clubs. This looks like some sort of XYZ type convention, so this is just relaying to two diamonds, where East is going to further pattern out or show more information about his hand. West bids two diamonds, completing the, you could call it a transfer, but it's just a forced relay. And now, again, North-South have decisions to make. Well, North probably shouldn't be coming into this auction because with club length and no real suit of his own, despite the 12 high card points, he has nothing to say. Additionally, because he's not in the pass-out seat, he doesn't know that East has a weak hand yet. East passes the two-diamond relay, which now indicates that East has a sign-off hand in diamonds with some spades, four-card spades suit. And South gets one more opportunity. Now, of course, South could back into this auction with two hearts, and I think that bid makes a lot of sense. Uh, the reason being that East has showed a very weak hand, West has already showed a limited hand with his opening bid, so with East having both pointed suits, he's unlikely to have hearts. West can have at most four card hearts over here, so maybe we find a heart fit, but we also have 12 high card points. East has a weak hand, West has a minimum opener, partner must have something over there. This is our absolute last chance that we know to get back into the auction. So I think I like balancing with two hearts, but 
for a lot of the same reasons why we didn't want to overcall two hearts over a spade, it does make sense to be a little conservative in these positions, especially vulnerable. If West does have four card hearts over here and some sort of maximum one no trump bid, and East maybe has six diamonds, four spades, and like an eight count, uh, we could get into a lot of trouble. But I think it's a little more likely that we could miss a game if we do pass the auction out here. And due to that rather large downside at imps especially, I think I would balance in. But South elects to go a little conservative, seeing the vulnerability, and also with just a very mediocre two heart bid, elects to pass. And so West, un er, yeah, West ends up declaring two diamonds on this hand. So let's take a look at North's prospects for an opening lead. They don't look great. I don't like leading clubs into the opening better, but maybe that is our most passive option. Leading from Queen 10 Doubleton is definitely scary, but it is our shortness, and we have enough trump control that we might be able to get a heart rough. It's possible, although East showing both pointed suits is fairly likely to have short hearts. Leading a spade away from the king is definitely not what I want to be doing. East has showed a natural spade suit, so we could be easily leading away into the ace-queen, even if they're split between the two hands. So it really feels like a heart or a club are the two choices. A heart feels like the most aggressive choice, and with the opponents being at such a low level in the auction, I think I would go with that. Our clubs are so weak that if we don't get to cashing our heart tricks immediately, then the opponents might be able to discard clubs from the dummy on Declare's long club suit. So I would probably lead a heart. I don't think I would fault North for choosing the more conservative choice of a club, but let's see what he does. North does go more conservative with, with a club, and this is not necessarily a disaster, but it does allow Declare to overtake the Ten of Clubs and start discarding hearts from the dummy. On his high clubs, I imagine that will happen for a couple of tricks. And South roughs in. So at this point, North South have taken one trick, and to beat the contract, they will need to take five more tricks. That seems maybe a bit far-fetched, but I suppose it's possible. Let's see what South can be thinking about here. So looking at the dummy, we see that our most likely avenue for beating this contract is probably to tap dummy out and then be able to run the heart suit later. If that's the case, we're really gonna want partner to have the heart queen. And so leading a low heart makes a lot of sense at this point. Yes, Declare could still have the Heart Queen. He's only turned up with nine high card points for his opening bid so far. But, um, if, if we start leading the Ace King of Hearts, Declare's Jack could set up, or Declare's 10 even in certain circumstances, could set up as a stopper for that suit. And our whole plan of tapping out the dummy before dummy is able to set up his spades will be ruined. So I could definitely get behind leading a low heart here. That will also allow partner, if he does win the queen of hearts, to play another club through, maybe promoting our jack of diamonds. And yeah, that's exactly what happened here. South does elect to lead a low heart. A little risky, but at teams, you really want to go for a line of play that defeats the contract, and this is probably the most likely way to do it. Partner has the heart queen, then hopefully he'll know what to do. If partner decides to win the heart queen and return a heart, then we'll try and tap out the dummy. If partner decides to win the heart queen and lead a club, then we'll be on board with that line of play. So declare wins the ten of hearts, or not declare, north wins the ten of hearts, and returns a small club. Now declare is in a bit of a tough spot. So he knows south can over off this trick, but it may be the case that discarding a spade isn't really discarding a loser in any way. It's just not helpful. Um, I think I would still discard a spade. 
maybe there's some chance where you're supposed to hop up with the King of Diamonds here and lead a trump, but I think that is going to result in Declara getting tapped out too quickly, and then the spades will all be lost anyways. So it feels to me like we should discard a spade, let South rough, let them play hearts, allowing us to trump in the dummy, and then maybe bang the King of Diamonds and hope that something good happens. That would be my thought. Um, but West here likes to rough middle with the Eight of Diamonds, I suppose hoping by some miracle that South didn't have either the Queen or Jack, and either had to overrough with the Ace. But this is definitely a bit of a dire situation. So South is able to overrough, and now should definitely lead the Ace of Hearts, or High Heart. Yeah, the King of Hearts makes sense. Declare roughs, and starts going after spades to try and set that suit up. But now another club comes. We need to rough with the Nine of Diamonds. We do. And we continue going after spades. It's maybe noteworthy that South didn't discard his second spade here, because then he might be able to rough the third round, but okay. South... Oh, South knows that North can discard on these parts, so... Dummy roughs, the spade is led, and North actually gets to claim the remainder of the tricks with three trumps. Surprising. No rounds of trump were ever played, and North's ace-queen-7 all got promoted into winners in this line of play. So, five tricks for Declare, so I imagine East-West were not particularly happy with being in two diamonds down three on this deal, but they would be pleasantly surprised when their teammates brought back plus 600 the other way. Okay, so let's take a look at... I guess board nine. This is the other large swing of the set. Uh, I can definitely see six clubs making seven at two different tables. But yeah, let's jump into board nine real quick and see what's going on here. All right, so in first seat east with 18 high card points opens a club. South passes, west bids a heart. Once again, a very, very weak response, but this is just something you have to do at the expert level. And here, by a passed hand, from North being a passed hand, comes in with two diamonds. Now, you might say, well, this hand is so much worse than that last hand we took a look at. How can North possibly bid two diamonds? But he's a passed hand. And we've seen that this partnership, John Kraniak and Vince Demoy, is not afraid to open 11 counts, 10 counts at the one level. So this bid is absolutely a maximum for what North could have. Yes, he's a bit uh, not distributional for this type of action. He would prefer to have a singleton heart or a singleton club or maybe a side four card suit or a six card diamond suit even. But this is absolutely a maximum hand that North could hold. Maybe with a six card suit he would have preempted. So this could be exactly limited to a five card diamond suit. Anyway, I really like the bid. It conveys North's exact hand pretty easily. It tells partner exactly what suit to lead, and you're not vulnerable, so there's very little risk. So East makes a support double. South, <laughs> this is highly aggressive, I would say, but I like the bid for one reason, and it's because South has heart length. If South didn't have heart length, the three diamond bid would not really preempt the opponents out of finding their fits. It would just, you know, allow them an opportunity to double you if that was the correct thing for them to do. But because of South, we have heart length, the opponents are unlikely to have a heart fit on this auction. Therefore, three diamonds could preempt them out of, for example, a three diamond Q bid from West asking for a diamond stopper. It could preempt them out of a two spade bid from West, showing a natural spade suit. It could preempt them out of a three club bid from West, showing some club support. And all of these things are helpful when we think the opponents haven't already found their fit. So I do like the three diamond bid, although it is really asking for it. 
on this four triple three hand with what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven losers. <laughs> Definitely not the greatest hand I've ever seen. But <clears throat> yeah, so not vulnerable. I'm sure South also took that into consideration that even if we do get doubled, hopefully it's not the end of the world. So West has nothing more to say. Pass, pass. And East does reopen with a double. Just general takeout, general values, I would say, for this kind of auction. And West has a difficult choice. So West knows that they only have a seven card heart fit. West also knows that his hand is kind of terrible. He has six high card points, a bunch of queens and jacks, no controls. So no real positive prospects for defensive tricks. But his last chance at a plus score might be to defend three diamonds doubled on this kind of hand. If we bid three hearts and this gets doubled by north, we're not in a happy place, I would say. So I would give a lot of consideration to passing this double. I think at match points, I would absolutely pass the double. But at teams, it's definitely a little scary. If the opponents do have some extra distribution, maybe they're making three diamonds and we've just given up game swing when we could be cold for three hearts, for example, or four clubs. But okay, West at this table likes to take the double out to three hearts and that passes out. So, north on opening lead, I can't imagine leading anything other than the king of diamonds, or diamond honor, the queen of diamonds. And from West's perspective, we have, if we're just counting losers, we have a club, a heart, and a diamond, maybe the spade finesse, but there's a little bit of trouble because we only have seven trumps, we can easily get tapped out. I think the strongest line of play would be to duck the opening diamond lead. This may cause the opponents to switch to trumps when it's not beneficial for them because they'll think that we're trying to rough a diamond in the dummy, which we kind of are. And then we would switch gears to setting up clubs and spades to discard our diamond loser. Um, so I think that's the strongest line of play by a long shot. I can understand winning the diamond ace and ducking a diamond immediately. Then if we do get a hand entry, we'll be able to rough a diamond. But roughing a diamond isn't necessarily good for us because then when the opponents duck the ace of hearts and win the second round of trumps, they'll be able to tap our own hand in diamonds and then we might lose all of the black suit winners that we have available. So, yeah, I, I think this was the clear play is to duck the opening diamond lead. Now North has a bit of difficulty in figuring out what to do, because he knows that now a diamond will leave Declare in control. Declare wins the diamond ace, maybe able to cross to hand and rough a diamond, which could be something he wants to do. But switching to trumps might help Declare guess the trump suit if he had difficulties in guessing the Jack of Hearts, for example, or in this case, the Ten of Hearts. So let's just see. North elects to switch suits to spades. This makes a lot of sense. The Ace King of Spades is attackable from North's hand, whereas it's not attackable from South's hand. So North realizes that he's getting in this one time with the Diamond card, and once more with the Ace of Hearts, he can put two spades through in case his partner has the Queen. And his partner plays the Five. I'm wondering if they're playing standard signals. I think they play upside down, so this could be a false card by South, just hoping to give Declare the wrong impression about what's going on in spades. Uh, Declare elects to lead the Ace of Diamonds. I think I'm just going to walk through this hand. There's a lot of complicated stuff going on in here, as there is with every 4-3 fit. And let's just see what Declare ends up doing. A lot of these plays look fairly natural to me. Declare crosses to the club queen and does decide to rough a diamond. I think Declare should probably try and set up a second club before he gets tapped out, but maybe he's already counted his way to nine tricks somehow. So 
North does win the Ace of Hearts and puts another spade through to the Queen. Another spade comes back, Declare is able to win. And takes a heart finesse. Wow. So that is actually amazing to me. Although maybe it was forced at this point. No, hearts could have split 3 3, but maybe it's due to the two diamond overcall originally, where North had the majority of the diamonds and therefore was likely to be short in hearts. But okay, Declare gets to a difficult end position and elects to take a finesse for the Ten of Hearts to make his contract. Now he knocks out the club ace, but South on lead has only clubs and hearts and therefore must return something to declare as winners, where the Queen Jack of Hearts are now good. Let's take a look at what happened at the other table on this board. So at this table, East opens a club, West bids a heart, and we see kind of the difference in styles between the Spectre team and the Rosenthal team. The Spectre team was very happy to enter the auction both times on somewhat marginal hands. This one I wouldn't consider particularly marginal. I think two diamonds is a very, very clear bid uh, for North in this position. Not vulnerable as a passed hand, especially if they have a two diamond preempt available where this is always going to be a five card suit. I, I think there's very little that can go wrong at these colors. So this seems like an oversight to me, but the take out double versus two hard over call on the other hand was a bit more uh, tricky, I would say. But so now East is able to bid two no trump, showing his 18 to 19 balanced. He has an excellent 18 count. Despite not having a five card suit and his clubs being a little weak, he has two tens, a nine, all the honors are working, so many controls. And West with six high card points says, okay, let's bid three no trump. So as South, we have a tricky decision to make on opening lead. I don't like any of South's options. Maybe a diamond is the least or most conservative. I mean, with West having a four card heart suit, we really don't want to lead a heart away from the 10. We absolutely don't want to lead a spade away from the queen. And a club into Declarer's opening club suit doesn't make a lot of sense. So I would say the choices are between a heart and a diamond, but on this kind of auction, West often does have a diamond suit. So maybe it's just a heart. I, I guess a heart is probably the Last choice, but wow, South does find the diamond lead. That's impressive, I would say. And I think this just kind of speaks to the idea that we don't really want to be leading our opponent's suits at trick one. So South judged that leading a heart from four to the 10 was less scary than leading a diamond away from Jack third. And it looks to work wonders on this kind of deal, but let's take a look at what happens for the defense. So Declarer absolutely needs to start setting up some tricks if he's going to make this contract. And he can already count five tricks for the defense. So it feels to me like this contract has absolutely no hope. Because we can count, even if diamonds are 4-4, four, four, that there are three diamonds and two aces for the opponents to cash after this opening lead, at least. <clears throat> so, I think you probably, kind of going along the lines of what happened in yesterday's match in the three no trump, you probably win the ace of diamonds at trick one and start going after the club suit. That feels like our most likely way to set up some extra tricks. If we can get three clubs and one diamond, we still need a heart trick and then we're still gonna need four spade tricks, so we might also need some heart tricks in the process. Yeah, this contract is not great. Let's just take a look at what Declare does. It feels like the defense isn't going to go wrong on this hand, but I suppose it's possible. Okay, Declare just switches to the King of Hearts, trying to set up that suit. North wins, and, ooh, interesting. Cash is the King of Diamonds. 
Oh no. I wonder if something bad's about to happen to North South. This feels like a very, very strange play. I mean, yes, South can unblock the Jack of Diamonds here, and will have to do so, and I think South should be able to find that play, but why not just return a small diamond to partner's Jack? This, this feels very wrong to me, but okay. South does correctly find the unblock of the Jack of Diamonds, but I think North made this way, way, way too difficult for his partner. Yeah, he might expect that his partner has a four-card diamond suit, in which case, why does it matter if we cash the king or lead a low one? But I don't think you should always believe that your partner has to be leading fourth best, as we can see on this type of deal. So okay, at this point, Declare's had enough, he realizes the opponents are getting the club ace as well, and that he's just gonna end up with seven tricks. Two down, and a pretty substantial parts for swing, I would say, to the Rosenthal team on that board, eight imps. But overall, nine to nine, you could say not a lot of excitement, but of course, that's just not the case. If one or two decisions went differently on these types of hands, there could be 13 imps or 17 imps floating around on various deals. But this means that Spectre return retains their 60-some imp lead going into the sixth segment. So that's going to wrap up the uh, fifth segment recap that I have for you. Join me again tomorrow as we look at the sixth segment of this exciting match. See you then.